It's the last book haul of 2020, and somehow it turned into one of the biggest... Actually, no, I don't know if it is the biggest one that I've done. I don't know. I might need to go back and research that. I don't know. But let's go ahead and talk about what I added to the library in December. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Welcome to 2021. But we can't really do that until we say goodbye to 2020 officially, and that's by doing the last book haul of the year for December of 2020. You guys continue to be way too good to me with some of the things that you sent me this month, but I also treat myself from time to time. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about those first. Let's kick it off by talking about some of the digital purchases I made, because what do I tell you guys every month? Kindle books count. Yes, they do. I went ahead and picked up on the recommendation of Mr. Jim Butcher, you might have heard of him, I had an interview with him, and he could not stop recommending a couple of series to me. And one of the first one is Benedict Jacka's Alex Veris series. So I went ahead and picked up that whole set because I'm crazy like that, so I just expect to like it. So uh, I feel like a lot of people that have read Dresden Files, see, they, they, they like it. It's just not as good as Dresden Files. Well, I don't expect that. That's like saying, oh, well, you would like this fantasy, but it's not as good as Lord of the Rings. I mean, it, sometimes it's just not going to happen that way. But, uh, you know, I haven't ventured outside of urban fantasy besides Mr. Butcher, so... I'm always open to trying some new things. Next up, uh, by my recommendation by my buddy Moid on Media Death Cult, which I talked about last book haul, this is uh, the Culture series by Ian M. Banks. Now, this is one uh, I kind of started a, a fire on my Discord by mentioning that a lot of people in the comments had said, hey, you like Dune, I think you'd like the culture. And everybody said, it's not like Dune, except that it takes place in space. Look, I have people tell me every series that I'm interested in reading is like Dune because they think that it's going to get me to read it faster. So it's not anything new. As far as this series, I've just heard it's, it's very uh, very standalone-ish. So obviously uh, digging into another series this long isn't something that I'd be ideally on board for. But I have heard that it's kind of a thing where you can kind of read one and go, that kind of thing. But uh, I don't know. Who knows when I'll get there, actually. But uh, there is going to be a lot of sci-fi in the channel. But unfortunately, culture is not one of those that's going to be anytime soon. But, you know, it's all a good deal for it. said, so why not? Let's move along to some of my physical purchases because there were a couple here that I think I need to talk about. Uh, I already talked about Lycanius a lot on this channel. Uh, the third book was finally available in trade paperback. So I got to complete that set. Monster of a book. But hey, uh, I, I'm going to be talking about Lycanius here pretty soon. I have a video planned that I'm going to do for it because I have a lot of people still who are confused about if they'll like Lycanius or not. Because I did a review for the first book, but I didn't do one for two and three. I said, guys, with a lot of series like that, I'm not going to do three non-spoiler reviews for three books in a series because I'm just going to repeat a lot of the same things if I can't get into spoilers. So I kind of have like a hybrid spoiler, non-spoiler video where I'm going to kind of talk about why I think you should probably go ahead and pick up Lycanius because I think it's very much worth reading. Uh, I did say we're going to be doing more sci-fi on the channel this year. And this one has been a long time coming. That is Hyperion, the whole series by uh, Dan Simmons. The Hyperion Cantos. All of a sudden, I'm going to be doing Hyperion this year uh, with uh, Indomayan, I think that's how you say it. Uh, that one's going to be if I really, really like this. Because uh, I've heard so many mixed things. A lot of people people either love this one or love that one. They don't seem to like all four. So I'll see where I stand after I finish uh, Hyperion and Fall of Hyperion sometime uh, this summer is when I plan on getting into those. But I have wanted to read the Hyperion Cantos ever since I was a preteen and I saw the cover art for the first book of my brother's bedroom of the Shrike. And I was like, holy hell, that looks incredible. So like Malazan, like uh, Robin Hobb, I'm finally kicking some of those things off the list this year that I've been putting off forever. The next one I don't really know anything about. Apparently the author used to run the Games Workshop. And I only know about it because John Gwynn recommended it a lot. That is Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward. I don't know what this, what's this series called? Uh, anyway, it's a book one of a, a planned trilogy. Book two is already out, but it looks like a John Gwynn book. Like how massive that is. Uh, but yeah, John actually has a, uh, has a blurb on the front. A hugely entertaining debut. Dude, my guy Gwynn's blowing up so much that he's getting front cover blurbs now. Awesome. Awesome. But uh, I, again, I don't know anything about it. Slick looking cover though, ain't it? That is sick. But uh, hey, that's awesome here. This is the guy that used to run Games Workshop, or maybe he still does. I, are they still around? Uh, that's really cool. Uh, it sounds like one of uh, you know one of us kind of making it big. You know, I'm excited 
about that. Uh, the next sci-fi series I'm getting into, uh, Bobbyverse. It is by Dennis E. Taylor. I've heard these books are just a ton of fun. Good palate cleansers. Uh, I probably won't be getting into them until later into the fall. On the, that's what the schedule looks like right now. Uh, I, I know that I said I'm going to blow up the uh, the sci-fi on the channel this year, but uh, it's going to be a little a little starting towards the summer because there are a couple of trilogies I want to finish. I want to finish Robin Hobb first. I want to finish. Uh, all right, that's just farce here, not the whole thing. Uh, and I want to finish the Poppy War, and then I'm going to really, really dive into the sci-fi stuff. I have a plan for sci-fi September this year, so there's going to be a lot of sci-fi. It might just come a little later, but judging off of uh, some of the books that you guys sent me, uh, yeah, it looks like sci-fi or something that you guys are very excited about me covering. A couple more that I picked up myself: Raven Cry. This is another one of the books in the uh, the Ravens or uh, Ravens Mark trilogy. Uh, I'm still missing book three, I think. But uh, Ed McDonald. Again, don't know a lot about it. It's just one that always is recommended very, very highly. So a good deal. Couldn't pass it up. And one because I love the movie so much, I want to read Life of Pi this year. So I went ahead and picked that up. Really cool cover because it's got like the, the Richard Parker's like embossed. It's really cool. It's really cool. Uh, but <laughs> I love that movie. That's one of my favorite movies of probably the last 10, 15 years. So I'm hoping that the book can make me feel half as much emotion as that book did so or i'm sorry that movie did so uh, i love a good survival story so bring that on let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that you guys were incredibly generous and decided to send me in the month of december i know i said last month that someone had sent me priest of bones book one in the uh the war for the rose throne by peter macklin and they didn't give a name. Well, it turns out it was a mod on my Discord. Jane sent me uh, both uh, Prince of... Did I get it backwards? Is it Lies first? or is... Whichever one book two is, I got it. She just wanted me to make sure that uh, I got both first. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Jane. It's very awesome. I've heard really cool things. I mean, somebody's saying it's a lot like um, Peaky Blinders, but in a fantasy setting. So that sounds really cool, even though I've never watched Peaky Blinders. But I know a lot about Peaky Blinders because everyone I know won't quit telling me to watch it. So that's uh, one that's going to be happening soon. I think he uh, actually, on Twitter, he actually responded to that and said that book three will come out next year. So uh, it looks like I won't have to wait for that, uh, that, that sequel when I get to it. Uh, next one up is from a, another patron on the channel. This is from uh, Jennifer. And this is really cool. I don't think that there's anyone on BookTuber Goodreads who has read Sword of Kagan who has not said just like incredible things about it. So I really don't even know anything about it. Uh, looks like Feudal Japan, if that's, also, that's something I'm always very interested in. But uh, again, big old beefy book. It's not on my, not on my uh, schedule right now, but it's what I call it's on my radar. I'll be looking for more standalone as I make my way through Mal Malazan. So that's really, really cool. But what's something else I'll be looking for while I make my way through Malazan is some palate cleansers. Sometimes you gotta remind yourself to take a breath when you're doing this because uh, you run out of breath really quick when you try to talk that much after you're lugging big heavy books over here. Uh, also from Jennifer is the first book in Iron Druid. This is by Kevin Hearn. Uh, this is a series I said I needed after I finished Dresden Files. I said I needed uh, another series that was kind of light, not a huge heavy commitment. It could be read rather quickly, you know, but an ongoing series. Uh, this, Monster Hunter International, and, and Alex Veras are the ones that come up the most. So thank you, Jennifer, for both that book and for this one. I've got lots of options here as I make my way through the uh, the big, heavy trek that is Malazan. Next up, this one's from Michael. And uh, obviously, Michael is very excited that I'm going to be doing covering more science fiction on the channel this year. Because he sent me the Arthur C. Clarke classic, 2001, A Space Odyssey. I only know the movie like everyone else. Doesn't look like a heavy read. So again, another nice palate cleanser, I think. I, I don't know. I've never read Clark or Asimov. So I know that it's kind of like getting your, uh, your, your, your street cred card for science fiction is reading those two. And one that I am very familiar with and I want to reread this year. This is The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. So again, thank you, Michael. This is really awesome. I love Bradbury, one of my favorite authors ever. I can't wait to revisit this. Haven't read it since I was a teenager. So this one will definitely be happening probably in Sci-Fi September this year. Because uh, again, not a heavy read. I don't think any Bradbury is a heavy read, but it's something that you should definitely do if you get the chance. Because again, one of the best ever. And this is a great, great story in my memory. Next up is from a very kind person who asked for their name not to be mentioned. And I can admire that. A lot of people prefer anonymity. But I just want you to know if you are watching this, I greatly do appreciate it. Because again, continuing with Bradbury, one of the greatest books ever written, Fahrenheit 451, never been more relevant than right now. Everyone should be reading this book. It's incredible. Everyone always likes to go to 1984 and say, oh, we're living in Orwellian times. No, sir. 
this is way more accurate of what's going on around the world right now. So I think that Fahrenheit 451 should not only be something that you add to your list, it should be mandatory. Everyone should have to read that. So I'm going to reread that sometime this year because I think it's just phenomenal. He also sent me Spellmonger by Terry Mancor. It's first I've heard of this. Uh, told me that it was what helped him get over his Wheel of Time and Dresden Files hangover. So that sounds like an interesting little mix there. Uh, again, I, I the first I've even heard of this series. So if you guys know any more about that, please drop in the comments and let me know. And then he also sent me uh, the first song in the radio, Raven Shadow by uh, Anthony Ryan, Blood Song. This is a series that I've heard so much about, but I've just never actually given it a shot. So many Abercrombie fans tell me that this would be exactly what I'm looking for. They just all tell me, oh yeah, but book three is a complete disaster. And that obviously deters me a little bit. But I've heard that Blood Song itself is an incredible book. So again, thank you, Anonymous. I really do appreciate it. Next up, I have an independent author sent me a copy of her book, Escape Reality. This is by Kayla Frost, a published author who is actually on our Discord, is participating in our Malice on Read Along, and a fellow Texan. So I obviously want to give her a shout out. Don't know a ton about her book, except what's on the back cover here, science fiction book, but uh, she uh, it, it's something that I wanted to make sure that I let you guys know about. I appreciate her sending this to me. I'm going to drop a link below if you guys want to check it out for a little more information but she also sent me the first book in skyward by brandon sanderson as a as a thank you i can't say how much i appreciate this so much i know i said recently this is one that i didn't have on my schedule to read because uh i haven't really jumped into his non-cosmere stuff yet but uh you know actually owning a copy kind of will maybe change my mind a little bit and that is a beautiful cover isn't it i love that that is so gorgeous so uh might not be the year without Sanderson after all. I don't know. We will see. Uh, thank you, Kayla. It's very awesome. Next up, this is from one of my patrons, and I, I, I appreciate this so much, bro. This is from Dalton. I have heard a ton for about uh, Mike Shackles. Uh, the, what is this series called? The Last War. My guy Petrick goes on and on about this series, about how fantastic it is. The first two books are out. The author was actually talking to me on Twitter the other day. Seems really, really cool, down to earth. Uh, I, again, I don't know much about it, but I mean, again, just some sick cover art. Uh, here it's very grimdark. Again, I like what I like, guys. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, but he also sent me a couple of science fiction books, uh, big ones here. Uh, Peter F. Hamilton is a one that gets recommended a ton. And uh, this is Reality Dysfunction, which is what book one in the uh, Night's Dawn. I don't know if necessarily this is the best place to start with Peter F. Hamilton, but because these books are massive. But uh, again, Peter F. Hamilton and Alistair Reynolds were two that I really wanted to get into just based off of a lot of high recommendations. And the last one he sent me also... I'm going to butcher his name, Adrian Tukoski. I'm not really sure if that's how I say it. Children of Time is definitely... I mean, I went back and I did my uh, my 14 sci-fi series I want to try. This one was pretty high on there because I thought it had a very, very uh, compelling premise to it. So um, that obviously hasn't changed. But guys, uh, unfortunately, neither one of those are on my sci-fi list for this year. But I do try plan to keep enough balance that, uh, like I said, going forward, fantasy, sci-fi, and horror, that uh, you're not going to be like waiting forever for me to do more science fiction. So uh, if I don't get to those this year, I'll probably be looking at those in 2022. And uh, there are a couple more big ones. I think by now, anyone who's watched this channel know that Michael Crichton was my guy. Someone else that is my guy is a viewer named Lockie. Very good friend that I consider off of the Discord. I call these people friends even though I'll probably never meet them because we are worlds apart. But uh, we obviously have something in common in our love for Michael Crichton as he sent me the Folio Society of Jurassic Park, one of my favorite books ever. And this is an insane gift. I don't know if you were just feeling the Christmas season or what, man, but I can't say thank you enough. I have eyeballed this so many times. This and the Dune Folio Society absolutely amazing artwork on this bad boy i can't say enough about anything folio society does it's just like dinosaur skin yeah i have my kid convinced it was actually dinosaur skin but uh, obviously the folio society anytime you got these you're just going to be blown away by the artwork that's in them of course i can't find any for you but uh yeah this is just a beautiful beautiful edition and i now have two copies of jurassic park and two copies of the lost world and i'm not getting rid of any of them so uh <laughs> anytime i can have more Crichton to look to the uh to the library, I'm very excited to do so. But Lockie, thank you so much. This means the world. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. When I opened this, I was like, okay, who was drunk shopping? Because I know this bad boy was not cheap. So uh, thank you so much. And guys, if you haven't checked out Michael Crichton, this is a great place to start for sure. I mean, everyone's familiar with the story at this point. And last up, there is a booktuber that I like. I mentioned her on the live stream. Her name is Diana, and her channel is called Diana 
in the nook. And a while back, I stumbled on her channel, which she had like maybe like a dozen subscribers really. So I don't know how it really happened. I don't know how the YouTube algorithm works. It just works weird sometimes. We were both reading Elantris at the same time. So I checked our channel, kind of listened to her thoughts on it. And then I checked out some of her other content. I was like, well, you know, I love her views on the Cosmere. It's different than mine. But like I said, I don't need an echo chamber. I like to hear differing opinions on these things. And I thought that uh, it was a really good channel. I've been kind of following over a while now. And I dropped her a message a while back, just told her, hey, I really like your channel. I like what you're doing. If there's anything I can do to help you out, please let me know because I think that you've got a lot of talent. So uh, I'll link that channel below for you to check out. But she decided to say thank you by sending me the Nevernight Chronicle by Jay Kristoff, the whole thing. This is such an incredible gift. Thank you so much, Diana. This is awesome. I love your channel and I love your generosity. I mean, this is just awesome. Uh, as far as this series goes, I, I, I so many so many twisted things. Some people tell me it's like some of the best ever. And other people will be like, Mike, I know what you like and I don't think that that's going to be it. I don't necessarily know maybe that you guys know exactly what I like. I mean, you have an idea, obviously, what I talk about. But I'm open to new things. Uh, but this was one that was on my radar. So uh, I'm very glad that she sent it to me. And it's, again, this incredible. Guys, you guys are so so generous. I can't get over this. This is incredible. I, I, I can't say thank you enough, but I want to make sure that I take the time to do so. So guys, what did you get in December? Did you get any nice Christmas gifts? I'm sure some of you do. I'm going to consider some of these Christmas gifts. That's what I'm going to go with it as. But uh, uh, anything that you guys got, I, I'd love to hear about it down below. Or do you anything you got to, any feedback about any of these uh, copies or these series? Anything you want to tell me? You've heard of Spellmonger. You know, tell me something about that. If you've seen this Jurassic Park Folio Society Edition, what do you think? You know, hey, drop in the comments. I will talk to you guys there.